Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, I'll be showing you how to remove a person out of a picture just like that. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and also don't forget to share with your friends over social media. Just hit that share button right down there below the video. Also hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss it on any videos in the future. And to learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, look at my complete training course, again, right down there in the description where I show you how to use the whole program, not just how to do a few steps like we see here in some of these YouTube project videos. Okay, let's go ahead and get to it. To start this project, let's just get rid of this file here, get that out of the way. And there's the original photograph. Now you can find a link to download this photograph right down there in the description. Take a look at that. You can also download the working file that I'll be finishing with here as well. So you have both the working file, the Photoshop Elements file, and also a link for this original file on that page. Okay, let's examine the picture and see if we actually can remove the person or not. There are a few things to look for. First off, you want to see if your foreground person is completely in front of your background person, the background person is not overlapping the foreground person. If the background person is overlapping the foreground person, you'll have to think of a way to repair or replace that bit where the overlap is happening. In this case, there's nothing in here. We're nice and clean along this edge, so we don't have any bad overlap happening. We're fine there. The second thing is, is the background nice and easy to use, nice and clean, easy to use. In this case, we have just kind of a grassy texture and that out-of-focus fence in the background. Very straightforward, very easy to do. We can take this and put it on top of her without any real issues. If you had a more detailed background or you have more things to look at, like different trees and so forth, it gets more difficult to make this kind of a fix. So if the background is too difficult, you may not be able to do this trick. It depends. You can sometimes, but again, but it really depends on the quality of the background. Also, there's a third person in behind her, like in here somewhere, and I want to take out the middle person. I couldn't do that because I would have a big hole cut in the third person. I'd have to replace that information somehow, and I don't have any place to take that from, so you can't do that either. Okay, let's now take a look at this. We've done that. We've figured it out. This will work for our project, so we'll go ahead and do the project. Now, the first step is to take this foreground girl and put her on her own layer, make a copy of her onto her own layer. We'll be making a careful selection along the right hand side here and not on the left hand side. Left hand side doesn't really matter, but the right hand side has to be a very, very careful selection. So we'll do that with a polygonal lasso tool and I'll zoom in on that one. And once we have that, we can then put this other picture and actually paint from here onto this person and paint that person out. So a couple of steps. So first, take the background layer, make a new copy of that right there. Here's our background. This will be the foreground girl copy. Now to do this, I'm going to float this window. If you don't have floating windows enabled, just go up to the edit menu, come down to preferences, wait at the bottom here, go over to general, click on that, and make sure that these two options are checked. Allow floating documents and also enable floating document window docking. Make sure those are checked choose OK. You can then dock your window just like that or pull it out. The nice thing about this is that I can come in here and really zoom in on this, make it very easy to work in a real zoomed in fashion. Like that's really zoomed in. The more you zoom in, the better your selections are going to be. So I'll go down here, bottom left hand corner, go to the polygonal lasso tool right there, and let's begin making our selection. I'll start just outside here. On the left hand side it's not critical because we're not covering up anything on that side. If you hold the space bar down you can reposition your picture just by dragging it. And then just keep on making a loose selection over here. Again drag it down and we'll come clear around the top of the hat here. And now we're getting into where this is going to begin to overlap. So now we need to slow down take our time and do a nice careful selection along this side. With this polygonal lasso tool, don't click too fast or your selection is going to collapse on you and you'll have to start over again. 
If you find the tool is in the way of the edge, you're not really kind of sure where things are, just pull it out of the way like that to take a look and then bring it back in to make your selection. Now the hair here is just a little bit wispy along that edge. We have to really ignore that because of where it's going over. It'll be very, very difficult to do a clean edge, but it's fairly straight hair, so this will work out okay. If it's really wispy, you could try using the refined edge just in that area, but it gets difficult on this kind of an overlap. So again, it's one of the things to look for. Do you have any wispy hair causing problems in there? Okay, let's go ahead and come around the top of the camera here. Again, I'm going to take my time. Just go nice and slow. We can always come back and clean this up once we get this first selection made. Now we're down to the edge, so hold the space bar down again, and let's push the picture up. There we are. One of the reasons why I like this polygonal lasso tool is I can pull it out, find my spot, and then bring it in and click on that spot. And it won't begin making your selection until you make that click. So you have very tight control over this tool. Makes it very easy to use. It also gives you perfectly perfect straight lines, which is good for the edge of the camera here. Okay, now we're down to the glove, so I have to come carefully around the edge of the glove here. And I'm just positioning my cursor and then clicking when I find the spot that I want. And again, I'm just taking my time and trying to do a nice clean edge. The less I have to come back and clean this up, the better. If I get it all in the first pass, that's really the best way to go if possible. Okay, just take your time, work around the glove. Luckily, it's just these fingers on this side that are needing a selection. The other glove is inside of that girl's figure and won't cause us any problems. Okay, now we're down to the sleeve down here around the jacket. Straight down, again, space bar, move it up, and finish this selection. Now at this point, it goes off the screen. You can actually click just outside, right there. So that's actually working. You can click outside, go straight across, hold the space bar down again. I'll pull a picture over. And see, there's my line. And I'll click just outside the picture right down here, and then come back up to my starting point. So you actually can click along down in this area here, and it will still make your selection. The reason I wanted to do that is I don't want to have my selection coming into the picture at all like this. I want it actually clear to the very, very bottom. Okay, there's our selection. Let's now just zoom out a little bit. I'll set this to fit on screen. So there's the selection. Again, this side doesn't matter. All we care about is this side over here. That's where we took our time with. Now, we have our selection made. Let's go up here to the Layer Mask button. Click on that. It makes a layer mask. If I hide the background, you see now we're only seeing that girl and the layer mask is hiding everything else. And the reason for doing it this way is that I can come back and I can modify the layer mask by painting black or white if I need to, to clean up that edge. Makes it real, real easy to do. Okay, let's bring our background back up again. Now, take the background layer, drag it up here to the new layer button, and we'll be working on this layer. The reason I did it this way is so I keep my background layer clean and untouched just in case. This is my safety layer, so I don't want to touch that layer. So we'll be working on this layer here. Let's now hide our foreground girl. There we go. Of course, she's in this picture as well, in this layer as well. At this point, we can copy from background here and copy this onto the girl over there. I normally do this zoomed in, so let's just zoom in a bit. I'll pull this out always. We need to do a little bit of an adjustment on our window here once I get the right zoom setting. Okay, here's our full zoom in. Now I need to be able to see my means at the top, so I'll pull it down just a little bit at the top. A little bit too far, I think. Let me just pull it down like this. And I want to see my options at the bottom, so I'll pull the bottom up. So there's the options at the bottom. Okay, it's about as big as I can get it on my screen here to make it easy to work on this thing. So we're seeing the whole width. We can go up and down for the height. Now the idea here is to take the stuff on this side here and paint it onto the girl over here and just, just paint her out. We'll actually be going in and overlapping onto the foreground girl, taking it clear to so it overlaps because we have that as part of this top layer. Let's go ahead and start this. I'll use the 
clone stamp tool. Right now it's at 85 pixels. It's a little bit small. I think I'll go up to about 150. I'll just type it in. That's better to begin with. You want a soft edge brush. This is a hard edge brush over here. Just scroll down, find any, any soft edge brush. Choose that and then set your size for whatever is comfortable for your particular picture. Now to use this, you hold the Alt key down and you make a selection out here. I'll Alt and click. That sets that as my target. And then pull this over here. You can see it's actually copying now from that place and pulling it over here. And simply do this and just paint this in. Now notice over there on the right hand side, a little plus sign. That's showing where it's copying from and the circle shows where it's copying to. So this little line right here, that's because I'm right against the edge there. So I'm copying the edge of the picture right there as well. And we'll fix that easily. Again, just grab some of this, hold the Alt key down, click, and then just paint over that line. Okay, let's just come back and reposition a little bit. I'll come down here a little bit further. And I'm trying not to keep these things too aligned just to help make it a bit more of a nice, clean match. Sometimes I'll pull from the top and work down. Sometimes I'll pull from down and work up. Just kind of randomizing that replacement. Okay, now, up over here. And as I mentioned, come right inside and actually over the foreground girl a little bit. And let's finish off the bottom. The reason we're going over the foreground girl is we had that foreground girl saved as that new layer. You'll see that in just a second. All right, let's just go ahead and quickly come in here and do most of this stuff. Let's scroll up a little bit. There we are. Most of this now is pretty straightforward because it's a nice kind of random background here. Makes it easy to do this. Now at this point, her head is overlapping on that fence. So we need to slow down be just a little bit more careful in here on this bit. So I'll take some of the fence up here. I think my brush size is too large at this point as well. So I'm going to bring the brush size down to 85. And I'll take some of the fence right up in here. There's the Alt key. Hold it down. Click right there. And I'll bring that fence down. Line that fence up with the other fence. Just take it down just a little ways. And just do that a couple of steps. Get the whole fence in. And then take out that bit at the top of her head. Okay, so far so good. Same thing back to the fence. Come down here and then again align that top of the fence up. Then pull down a little bit. Let's get the part just underneath the fence. And again line the fence up and then come down. Get the stuff underneath. And I'll go backwards this time and get rid of some of that hair that's just right in there against that little bit of a stand on the fence there. Now here's a tricky part. I'll come down over here to this thing. Kind of a duplicate of this is right down here. I'll just copy right in the front of it right there. Copy that. Bring that right to the front of this one. And I can use that to fix that side, that left side of that. That looks good. And let's finish this off. There's a little bit of cleanup in here. I'm matching a few things. And there we go. The background girl has now been removed. Of course, we've chopped into this foreground girl. We can fix that easily enough just by bringing back up this foreground layer. And there she is. So far, so good. But let's take a look and double check our edges and also double check our pattern in the background here. Let's pull this down. You want to check your background, make sure you don't have anything that's really duplicating and standing out and looking bad. Like here's a bit here, here, and here. Those are all kind of duplicates. So let's grab something someplace else and put it here and someplace else and put it up there to hide those duplicates. There's one here and one here. I'll just grab something here, just kind of put it on top of that. And just go through and quickly hide anything which might be just too much duplication. So it doesn't look like we're doing what we're doing, which is you know copying from one to another. And that looks pretty nice. I think we're okay. A little bit of something right down there is not very good. 
And I think that is, that's okay. All right, so that takes care of that background girl. She's now gone. Let's now check our edge on the foreground here. I'll zoom in a little bit. Now it's a little bit dark along the edge, but that's okay. And it's a real hard edge in here. That's a problem with that real hard edge. If I scroll to the left-hand side, notice how it's actually a little bit of a soft edge, just a touch, very, very soft on that edge, not real hard. So I need to fix that edge in here. We can do that very easily. Just go over here to the layer mask. I can actually pull this in a little bit. Go to the layer mask side, and then go over here to this tool right here. This is the blur tool. You can change your brush size on this. There's a brush size right there. You can change your brush size if you want to. I think this will be okay. I'm just going to come down and just kind of paint right along the edge. And I'm painting with the blur tool on the layer mask. I'm not on the picture. I'm just on the layer mask. I'm actually blurring the edge of the layer mask down a little bit. And it just softens that edge up just a touch. And it gives it much more realistic effect where it's not really a clean, super hard edge. You can really see it in those edge of the glove there really helps kind of just to push those back into the picture just a little bit. So let's finish up around the edge of the glove here. Just softening up that edge and getting down to the jacket edge. Soften that up a little bit. And just follow straight along the edge like that. And there it is. Just a little bit of a softening of the edge and that should fix it. Let's now go back to fit on screen. And there we go. There's our finished picture. There it is with the girl. That's the original. And there it is with the background girl removed. Again, fairly straightforward, but a few things to watch out for as you're doing this. Now, at this point, once you've finished, just double check your patterning in here. Double check your duplication up in there. Make sure everything looks natural. And you're done. Okay, so that's how to remove a person out of a photograph. Don't forget to share this video on social media. Just click on that share button right down there below the video. And also look at my complete training course. And you'll find a link again in the description as well. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.